Hi, I'm Greg Gutfeld. Now, even shorter. Here's what's coming up. Your choices for the Democratic nominee, one who thinks corporate America is evil and one who thinks corporate America is really evil. What's it going to be, New Hampshire, your state? Ted Best Donald in Iowa. Now Marco's shadowing both in New Hampshire and Kasich's looking strong. That is, if you believe the polls. FYI, polls are stupid and I hate them. Not the Polish. Plus, an exclusive look at the world premiere of a sneak peek of a new show you'll only see on this show, Political Shark Tank. Let's do this, America, quickly. I just ate at Chipotle. Let's welcome tonight's guest. Well, she's brainier than a zombie's breakfast. It's Jillian Turner, former National Security Council member in the Bush and Obama administrations, Rhino, and a Fox News contributor. At least so shocking, paramedics use him to revive cardiac patients, Gavin McInnes, host of the Gavin McInnes, McInnes show. It's a very ugly face. Aww. And he's so funny, all of his gas is laughing gas. It's actor, <laughs> writing, writer, and comedian Kyle Grooms. And her briefcase is a flask. It's Joanne Nosichinsky. And finally, she's where silver linings go to die. National Review reporter Catherine Timp. Sad girl. But first. Oh. Thursday's Clinton-Sanders debate was a progressive orgy, heavy on condemnations of the rich, light on ideas for national security. Wall Street is perhaps the most powerful economic and political force in this country. I propose changes in CEO compensation. A Wall Street executive destroys the economy, $5 billion settlement with the government, no criminal record. I want to go after the pharmaceutical companies. Six largest financial institutions in America today have assets of roughly $10 trillion. Now, if, if all we're going to talk about is one part of our economy, and indeed one street in our economy, we're missing the big oil companies. It's boring but important. Politics is a road with only two lanes. You're for national security or you're for crushing Wall Street. For some reason, there's no in-between. The uber prog Bernie Sanders thinks American inequality calls for revolution, which is odd given that we've been operating under the world's greatest progressive leader ever for seven years. And Bernie says it's gotten worse. His solution? Step on the gas. But the left and the right both crave the same thing. It's security. The right against outside threats. The left against domestic injustice. They could complement each other. For we live in a new world where national security must be addressed first if you want to help each other out later. The new threat is suicidal and apocalyptic. Even Al-Qaeda finds ISIS a little pushy. To ISIS, everything must go. All victims are half off. And sorry, Bernie, free college is pointless if you're headless. Sanders attracts the earnest youth who ignore the threats of the modern age but see the appeal in free college and health care. But free is never free. Someone always pays, and sooner or later you become that someone. So before you vote, acquaint yourself with the socialist paradise that is Venezuela, where they've had to ration food. Did you know Bloomberg charts the world's worst economies? Venezuela owns the top slot for two years running. Look it up. It's what happens when government expands, driving down dreams and opportunities of its burdened people. Venezuela has somehow managed to implode and explode at the same time. Heavy drinkers call it a shamit. It's a mess on both ends, and it wasn't like they planned it, because no one ever does. Period. All right, I'm going to go to you, Kyle, first, because this is your first time on the show. Thanks. What You saw parts of the debate. Who did you like more and why? Uh, I'm a big fan of Bernie, just because he reminds me of my science teacher. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Hillary, it was interesting when she was like, uh, spit it out. Uh, spit it out. Yeah. Say what you got to say. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm here. Hey. hey. Yeah. No subliminals. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then he didn't do anything. He, he like, backed nothing. off. Yeah, she kind of punked him. Yeah, she did. And that's unusual. I'd like to see her do that with Iran. Jillian. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you make of my whole idea that this is a problem that like if like they completely ignore national security in favor of domestic injustice? You buy my theory? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, and I think it's now going to be to their peril. I mean, maybe in the first few debates, you can have ca candidates kind of skirt some of the more substantive issues, but especially Bernie Sanders in this debate, it was a missed opportunity for him in a big one. You know, mm -hmm. he said that uh, when it comes to fighting ISIS, we've got to be tough and we've got to be smart. And there was a lot of applause 
but it's really a meaningless thing to say. He, it's time for him to bring some substance here. It's time for him to bring some know-how. Because Hillary Clinton, I hate to say it, hawkish as she is, is really beating the crap out of him on foreign policy. Mm -hmm. And if he wants a real chance going into the primary, that's what he's going to have to do. Mm. Gavin, you know, you, you understand the youth. I do. You once ran a uh, magazine for young people, I believe. I did. I speak Highlight. youth. Yes, yes. You I can talk youth. child. Yes, so the youth are, are strongly behind Bernie. He's got a big lead with the young The youth, they don't speak math. They don't understand mathematics. So when he says that the top six corporations have $10 trillion, they're tiny brains go okay take that 10 trillion and pay off the deficit now it's only 8 trillion they just think that this that redistributing income can solve the deficit in an afternoon yes but you know when you say tiny brains that doesn't encourage them to listen to you does it <laughs> I hate them and I don't want them to vote I'm not trying to gain their support L please young people stay at home stop voting you're not smart enough no but see wouldn't it be better if you tr actually engage them and try to try to say, okay, how do you pay for this stuff? Rather than dem denigrating them, I'm learning this. I'm learning that it's probably better to somehow engage people you disagree with. Cut the cord. <laughs> if you don't support Bernie when you're young, you have no heart. And if you support him when you're an adult, you have no brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And I was born an old soul. Uh, so, <laughs> no, it's. People are really? supposed, you can't say that about yourself. Somebody I, has to tell you that. <laughs> you can't say I'm an old, it's like it's giving like yourself a, a nickname. Diagnose. Yeah, I do a lot of things for me, which makes me an adult and I'm heartless, apparently. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, tons of my friends, they love Bernie Sanders. Unfortunately, what they don't realize, and Bernie has even said this, with all this free stuff that, that the country's gonna benefit from, the benefits come later and Currently, the burden is going to fall on the middle class. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, have the foresight to see into the future that things will get better. People don't live that way. They just don't. They want the immediate free stuff, the gratification now. And that's not going to happen with Bernie Sanders as president. Mm. What about you, Kat? You're technically a millennial, a miserable one at that. Yeah. Uh, can you blame people for not wanting free stuff, especially when it's married to punishment or some kind of punitive action against people you don't like, i.e. the rich. It's like the right. best of both worlds. Right, exactly. People who have more things than you, you hate them and you want stuff. But they're definitely talking a lot about this. And I think that actually kind of proves that Bernie's doing a great job. Because this has always been his thing. Anti-Wall Street's always been his thing. And instead of trying to talk about whatever her thing is, Hillary's saying, oh, me too, even though evidence proves that she's not. He's kind of running this a lot more than we thought someone that was supposed to be a long shot candidate ever, ever would be able to. You know, my favorite moment was not in the debate. It was in the town hall. Uh, it's what I liked most about Bernie was this sound on tape. What kind of car do you actually have? Uh, I have a small Chevrolet. Um, it is one of the smallest Chevys that they make. Do you know what year it's from? Yeah, it's about five years old. Okay. Yeah, not bad. A red car. Is it true you chop your own wood? It's a red car. <laughs> that is exactly what Bernie Sanders said. It's a red car. It's a red car. You wanted specifics. <laughs> I love that. But he's dangerous. <laughs> he must be stopped. He's yeah, I don't want powerful. him driving on my roads. <laughs> no. All right. So I have, a th I have. Here's my theory for solving the world problems. You have. You can have three options. You can have national security and social programs, or you can have national security without social programs. But you can't have social programs without national security. I don't think that's a straw man argument. I think that's actually a plan. Now, when you see that the fact that we have this problem with employment, uh, I, I think that it's time for like a national security surveillance complex. You always hear about the military industri industri industrial complex. Why not a national security surveillance co complex where the jobs in security with surveillance and technologies help create a whole new industry. It's like when Paul Krugman said the way to you know, create an economy is an alien invasion. Why don't we act like that? Does that make any sense to anybody? Yes, it could displace Wall Street. Yes. It could be the new Wall Street, which yes. would be fabulous. Yeah. I think everybody should agree with me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I, I just worry, though, that all those jobs will go to the robots. Yes. But well, that's we'd be a problem. safe. 
Yeah, We'd be I'll safe agree from with you terrorism. when we can close the borders. Once we close the borders, we don't have to worry about all these social programs and, mm -hmm. and national security. We, once we have an America that can be self-sufficient, we don't have to worry about anything else. I think Kyle is agreeing yeah, with you. Yeah, no, no, I, I like foreigners. Foreigners are okay. No, we, we're good for foreigners. <laughs> 60 million, all right, let's let's. What about assimilate. the ones that are here? Do they get to stay or they have to leave and then we're we We're going to get rid of them using attrition. Just make it slowly a little harder to hire illegals. and then You are a foreigner. I got to yeah. remind the viewers, you are not from the United I States. I brought 12 jobs the day I arrived. If we can all have immigrants like me, we'll be doing great. But see, it's not up to you to decide who is the good or bad immigrant, is it? Yes, it's the, it's the economy's job to decide. We've been doing that up until 1974. We said, are you an asset to America? Yes, come in. Now it's just, does your cousin live here? Come on in. Anybody want to disagree with him? Oh. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think Americans are just destroying America more than the foreigners are. You know, Americans, mm, you know, they sure. come here, they work, yeah. they, they pick fruit. Uh, Americans can't pick fruit for two hours. They join That's so true. Team, they, they join gangs, they become terrorists. I, I will ferment fruit. Yes, you do. You do for Ben yes. I think it's the young people. No one should be allowed to be under 25 anymore. There you go. Makes me feel old. <laughs> yeah, not immigrants. That's a great get rid way of all to the young get people. rid of export the young people. All right. Up next, the race for the White House just got racier. In New Hampshire, Marco Rubio is now number two. Hmm. But will he be able to trump? What's his name? Uh. Welcome back. The Republicans are in New Hampshire and they're blistering each other like a strain of rampant herpes. I can't do it all justice, so behold, this soundbite buffet. You know why? Because he was born in Canada. Donald is throwing yet another temper tantrum, or if you like, yet another Trumper tantrum. Let's see what, in fact, the Cruz uh, campaign will do about those individuals. I know this about politics. When everyone's attacking you, you must be doing something right. When Senator Rubio gets here, when the boy in the bubble gets here, I hope you guys ask him some questions. Can we rule out Ted Cruz as your vice presidential pick? Well, I don't know. Look, I have nothing against it. It was, it was sort of a sad thing that happened, but I've always liked him. I've always gotten along well with him. Take that, Putin! <laughs> Please clap. I actually know less now than I did before we ran that. All right, Gavin, we were talking in the green room. You love Cruz. Love him. Love him. Why? Borderline gay for him. <laughs> You're borderline gay for I him. I would like to hug him, but yeah. no more. No more? Well, that's... But I said on this very show, I said, Trump is a snowplow. He's going to pave the way for Cruz. And that's exactly what happened. Trump got immigration on the table. He got everyone talking about it. And then Cruz said, thank you, crazy guy. I'll take it from here. <laughs> I want them both. Can't we have a Superman, Batman ticket? Yeah, because they'll lose. Are you sure? What yes. I mean, I think that what you're, what you're talking about is an emotional... You've got an emotional feeling that may or may not be based on a fact that it could win a general election. That's what will get dads off the couch. The reason we White keep dads. losing is because dads don't get off the couch. Yes. Mm. But what I'm about the rest of the code. dads? I need dads. Jillian? So on the, on the voter fraud allegation, yeah. you know, it amazed me that this was just Donald Trump being a sore loser, mm -hmm. distracting from the real issues at hand like he always does, you know, when confronted with a reality that he doesn't like. Yeah. He tries to divert everybody's attention. So he just lost the first caucus. It was a tremendous blow to his campaign. So what does he do? He tries to create another new shiny story over here to distract people yeah. from that, which was Ted Cruz is a you know, whatever he was saying, the horrible things about him, be, you know, this yeah. perpetrator of fraud and all those kinds of things. I got to say, I think Cruz may have been onto something because after they, you know, he put out that email and, you know, uh, uh, Carson flew down to Florida to pick up clothes, which is a long way to go, Kyle, to get clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that was weird. I'm like, they don't have a gap in Iowa. <laughs> yeah. in, you know, in New York City is a staple of fashion. Why don't he go to New York and get some clothes? I know a dude in Newark that'll hook him up with a nice outfit. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Harvey suit, perhaps. You know. That would be great. Suit, yeah. that would be, you know, uh, but, then, but then he just cut, he cut 
50 staff members. Mm -hmm. So maybe there was some, there's something going on there. And there, maybe it wasn't a complete lie, Joanne. I want to ask you, uh, does anybody actually know what's going to happen? We have a poll every 10 seconds, and I'm I'm sick of polls. Yes. And if I if I, if I if pollsters were calling me in New Hampshire, I would just lie to them just to get back at them for annoying me. Yeah. Do we have it? We don't have well, any idea. There's new polls every time. One Newsmax poll, I believe yesterday, said that Jeb Bush was in second place, mm -hmm. which I don't think that's that's going to be the result in New Hampshire at all. But I think what happened, especially with Trump, he realized that in Iowa he didn't do all of the the groundwork, the campaigning that like Rubio was doing. He was just flying under the radar there, hosting several events a day. And he's realizing that with these early states, voters recognize how significant they are. They want to feel that significance. So they want that one-on-one -on -one interaction with candidates. And I think that really matters. So hopefully he's doing a little more of that. I still, I want Trump to do well. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like when it's a tight race there. I don't like Cruz's celebratory speeches. I want someone else to make one. Yeah, so. well, you're, really, you're just hoping for that Trump phone call. I, you know, <laughs> I love talking on the phone. Yeah. Um. Yes. <laughs> Kat, uh, uh, Rand Paul dropped out. I say ha-ha to he, you. Ha-ha. Ha. It's so sad. It's very sad. He was just too reasonable too often. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, Rand Paul would never take a car to Philadelphia because he's scared of terrorists on the train. He understands that the car is more dangerous, like somebody I know that rhymes with Bregg Buttfeld. <laughs> <laughs> he was reasonable. We need to be afraid of terror, obviously, and do things about it. But he was reasonable, and reasonable just isn't popular. That's reasonable, why I'm unpopular, because I'm so reasonable. Reasonable is thinking Snowden is a hero. That's yeah, reasonable. Oh, yeah, Snowden's a hero. That's true. No, he's, he's, he's not, not a cool guy. I wouldn't want to hang out with him, but I'm very happy that he considers my freedoms as important as I do. Oh, that's, you're, you're so full of it. No, I'm not. You and your phony, The government is, though. You and your phony glasses. Look, my glasses are a star. <laughs> <laughs> Jillian, uh, Rubio's climbing in the polls. Uh, yeah. It's going to make him a target. My only issue is with Rubio, he's, he, he kind of reminds me of an earnest 12-year-old at a sleepaway camp. Yeah. He needs a little oh. bit of gravitas. And I, I'm saying that as somebody that uh, likes, here's, I like what I hear, mm -hmm. but he just seems like, was, that, was Obama like that? In the beginning, he was young, and may, maybe all of a sudden he be kind of grew into something, I don't know. We look, he is, he is young, and he looks very young, which I think kind of counts against him in a way, especially in this election cycle after we're coming off of a very young president. But I think that at the end of the day, something he does every time is he pulls through with substance. And I think that on the Republican side of this, ca this election cycle, that cannot be underestimated, meaning yeah. he tends not to have moments where he says something outrageously stupid or outrageously controversial yeah. or something that's so out of the box that nobody can really connect with it. He stands his ground. He's pretty consistent. He's a great performer. You know, when he speaks, he brings it most every time. So that's good. And before we move on, I just want to say to you and to Kat that I am very reasonable and also popular. Yeah. So <laughs> not true. Which is funny because Gavin is unreasonable and unpopular. <laughs> yeah. What's your I've problem with Rubio? What is your problem with Rubio? Well, you know, homeschooled kids. And they come up to you and they have a wand they made out of wood and they say things like, so what's your deal? Where do you work? And you go, get away from me, child. Stop talking to me like we're friends. They, he has that kind of a vibe. <laughs> he has like a homeschooled what's vibe. A, homeschooled kids, I've met a few. They're, they're always, they smarter, than you. Like they're always they're smarter than you. No, they, they, they want to hang out with adults. They sit next to you and stuff. And you go, go play with toys. I know. And... I, he, the only reason he's doing well is because people go, I got to get centrist if we're going to win. He's so more just betting Wait on a him. minute. He's more conservative than Trump. Not more with th borders. He's so, okay, open so, borders. All right, all right, all right. He's fine with his just say, dad. My dad. No, but just be killer. honest. Just be honest. It has nothing to do with ideology. For you, it's just borders. The Trump is not a conservative at all. He, he's a centrist. And I don't mind that. Hey, people evolve. I used to be pro choice. People yeah. get smart. He's gotten smarter. All right. Mm. In addition to Rand Paul, a few other candidates left the presidential race. We will remember them fondly, or barely at all. Let's take a look back, shall we? This is kind of acoustic. Woo! Oh. Without 
fear in your heart and feel feel like you still have a choice if we all light up we can scare away the dark we wish we were younger and fitter and thinner we wish we weren't losers and liars and quitters we want something more not just nasty and bitter we want something real not just hashtag and twitter the third question most popular question from google is is Rand paul still running for president and uh i don't know wouldn't be doing this dumbass live streaming if i weren't so yes i still am running for president get over it and feel feel like you still have a choice if we all light up we can scare away the dark what I mean. that was very very moving yeah all right coming up now that women can serve in any combat job uh should they be made to register for the draft we shall ponder that question and watch gavin's head explode next A female draft, brilliant or daft. This week, the top officers in the Army and Marine Corps testified that they believe all women, including even the adorable Reese Witherspoon, <laughs> should have to register for future military drafts. Generals Mark Milley, Miley? Milley, and Robert Neller, seen here looking awesome, uh, agreed that the current draft law, which requires only males to register, should be changed now that women are allowed to uh, allowed in combat roles. The pair also told the Senate Armed Service Committee on Tuesday it will take up to three years before the combat posts are fully integrated. Well, I don't know about you, but if you're going to start drafting women, what's next? Letting them vote? <laughs> That's interesting. That's a joke, people. All right. Um, strong feelings about this. Uh, Kyle? Uh, yeah, I think they should uh, register for the drafts. Mm -hmm. I think they should get paid equally. Mm -hmm. And I think they should pick up the bill. <laughs> <laughs> that makes Equality. sense. Equality. Equality all, all around. around. The board. That yeah. makes so... And Open my door. Yeah. Uh, what else? It's, you know, <laughs> yeah. things I do. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm tired of it. Gavin, something tells me you're not for this. I'm <laughs> all for it. Oh, really? They should have to do... All, they want equality for everything fun. They want to be... <laughs> Equal in movies and, and desserts and parties. How about you're equal in sanitation? How about you have to go down into the sewers and remove rat kings mm -hmm. from blocked pipes? How about you go to war and yeah. die? So would they only draft women who are over like five foot ten and 180 pounds or something? Cause that, but you guys are they... missing a really important point here, too, which uh -oh. is that... <laughs> so one, que one question over here is, should women have to sign up for the draft? But the other question is, who do you want to make that decision? And that's what this legislation that these two Republicans just, mm -hmm. just proposed recently is really about. It's, do you want Congress to make that call, or do you want the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, to make that call? Because those are your two options. So Congress is very concerned mm -hmm. that they're not going to have a say. The Department of Defense is going to declare a policy one way or the other, and then now this is the national standard. But they feel that they should really, as the representatives of the people, get the, the people's opinion. Because it here. was Congress, wasn't it, that said all combat roles should be open to women? No, ultimately it's a Pentagon decision. Oh, It was well, kind there. of a stroke yeah. of the pen from the Secretary of Defense. So this is a really big, that's what this new legislation is about. So that's... Jillian, you just took the Greg Gutfeld show into special report territory. Wow. We're not used to going this deep. We usually read the first two paragraphs of every story, then we get drunk, and then we write our stuff I... down on cocktail napkins. Kat, uh, I think you'd make an awful soldier, but what do I know? Yeah, I'm not going. There's no way I'm going, not just for myself, but for our country, all right? Like, look, yeah. I, this is not a war body. I, I don't really know a lot of This is not a war body here. Uh. I also don't have the emotional fortitude for war. I'm not going. Doesn't matter. I'll go to Canada. However, I, I don't, it doesn't matter. But you know what? Don't they have to pass the same physical 
qualifications anyways, mm. I wouldn't pass that. No, but that's so, the question. Yeah. If they alter the standards, then it's wrong. If they yeah. keep the standards, mm -hmm. as Kyle would say, you would need a different kind of woman to yeah. match the same muscle different mass creature as a man, mm -hmm. I believe, Joanne. Yeah. Thankful, I'm staring at you. Thankfully, just like pageants, I've now aged out yes. of what of what the, the draft would be of me signing up. I do wish, though, that there was a greater sense of nationalism in this country. Mm -hmm. The idea of serving your country in whatever capacity. Do I think that a lot of women will be able to serve the same as men in war zones? No, but can they help in other ways? Yeah, and, and I don't know that it should be mandatory, but I do wish that people had more of that desire. I think it's, I mean, look, if you want to serve then you're better, you're, that's awesome. I agree yeah. with you completely. And I look at Israel, which has a draft, correct? And mm -hmm. male and female. And you, meet, and you can tell it's a different kind of mindset when they, after, they, after they go through it. But I don't know. I have a thought experiment here. Okay. Imagine, if you, okay, if you don't think, yeah, thank you, Gavin, for getting ready for this. If you don't think biology matters, what if this were the reverse? That for the last couple of thousand years, only women fought the wars? And then suddenly in the 21st century, we go, you know what? We should let men get involved in the wars, and, the, and it's a gender with 50% more muscle mass and a ton more testosterone. So all of a sudden, women are like, whoa, this is weird. This is exactly what's happening in the MMA. If a fighter, a male fighter, has a sex change and fights, the female fighters are like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this because it's unfair. Now they're talking about maybe we have to adjust the hormone levels so, the, so women and men can fight equally. So... That's an interesting way to look at it that perhaps makes no sense whatsoever. Well, in, in your experiment, if we're going to do that, we'll have to talk to President Hitler. Because if women were soldiers for the past hundred years, we would have lost World War II. We probably like wouldn't Goldie have been Hawn. embroiled in half as many wars, which is another good Ooh. point. Women are not naturally war makers as That's are untrue. many men. What about pagan days? All you guys were doing was sacrificing no, 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 babies and virgins. But, you know, you know, were horrible with sneaky women. tactics. But just because women are That's drafted also doesn't yeah. necessarily mean they're going to the front lines in mm -hmm. combat. As you know, as Joe pointed out, like there's many, there's millions of different roles they can serve in the military. It doesn't mean they have to be combat officers. They can be the cheerleaders for the soldiers. There's a lot of soldiers. There's looking <laughs> after soldiers' kids, yeah. keeping the home nice. But then men could be cheerleaders too, right? <laughs> Yeah, I suppose. You need someone at the bottom of the pyramid. So. Exactly. They need those guys at the bottom. I don't even know what that means. I think it's great. I think that, you know what it is? It, it, it's like you said, uh, feminists want total equality. This is total equality. Yeah, and equality sucks. By every metric, men have it worse off. We're more likely to get raped if you include prison. We're more likely to be assaulted. We're more likely to die. We're more likely to commit suicide. And so you're if not you want to come over to our side of it, <laughs> then get ready for some rough times. I will dispute the, the rape part, but I will say this. <laughs> industrial accidents, true. People who build bridges generally are men, and they often fall off them. I get that. You know, that happens. In war, that happens. So I guess, you know, total equality means there'll be more industrial accidents. And yeah, more great. More casual. Right, because you're not as smart or as good looking as women as a whole. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, are, so we, are, we are smarter and dumber than women. Yes, that's mm -hmm. true. The is much wider. We have a wide variety. You guys are more sort of like a little bit dumb, a little bit smart. We're <laughs> total morons and geniuses. There is like we have a huge spectrum. Yeah. I like us. We're very underrated as men. <laughs> yes. Well, well, some men are. <laughs> I don't know what you'd be rated as at this point. Okay. <laughs> Up next, an examination of the impending financial crisis due to declining fuel prices, record low interest rates, and unraveling Chinese economy. Just kidding. We're going to look at Super Bowl ads. Everybody loves Super Bowl ads. I hate them. Hate them. This weekend offers a thing called the Super Bowl. I hear it's about sports. Like every year, everyone has to talk about the ads. Aren't they clever? Aren't they funny? I hate them. But aren't they also offensive? Our very own Catherine Timph is back to let us know what we should be outraged about this year with a special Super Bowl edition of... Let's start uh, with a commercial that will air this year from Heinz Ketchup. It features a stampede of wiener dogs. Let's take a look. It's hard to resist great taste. I can't give Meet the ketchups. 
Kat, what's offensive about that? Ever hear of the wage gap, Greg? It's not a myth, it's a math, all right? This is proof of that. Ketchup is a $278 million business. Mustard, just a little over $88 million. Mm -hmm. You notice, looky here, the ketchups are all men and the mustard is a woman. Why does the woman condiment have to make less money than the male condiments, Greg? You, are you mad? Are you not offended by this? Well, right? actually, you're sexist, all right? You need to get on board the sane train with the rest of us and realize this is real. More people, choo -choo. En more people enjoy ketchup than mustard. Let's face nope, it. it's sexism. All right. Uh, this next one is from LG, and it stars the man most people say is my long lost twin, Liam Neeson. <laughs> and this future, it must be protected. <laughs> What's it got to do with me? Look. What is it? It will change everything. That's why they want to stop it. They will come after you without cease. Because the future belongs to us. All right. Uh, tell us why you hate this one, I the, guess. I feel like this is pretty obvious. Yes, right? okay. yes. Yeah. There's a white guy in a suit telling another white guy in a suit that the future belongs to them. All right. Mm -hmm. Guess what, bucko? Nothing belongs to you just because you're a man. All right. You don't own me. Keep your phone company off my body. My body, my choice. I'm an instrument, not an ornament. It's 2016. Women are the future. And we will drink your tears. <laughs> Fantastic. Boom. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. All right, next up is a commercial advertising the fruit uh, that is on course to take over the world, avocados. It's a fruit. And over here we have their alphabet. It was called emoji. Few symbols could express the vast extent of their emotion. And this is the white and gold dress that caused the Civil War. This is Scott Bayo. But most amazing of all are the avocados from Mexico. They're always in season, so you can enjoy them all year long. <coughs> Great commercial. What was wrong with that one? You say great commercial. I enjoyed that They're one. They're Mexican avocados in space, all right? You know what that's really saying? That all Mexicans are illegal aliens, that it's okay to call them aliens and send them off to space with the other aliens because they're taking our jobs and that's where they belong. That's what. It's really inappropriate, Greg. But it had Scott Baio. But it's racist. All right, all right. All right, so we have uh, finally this T Mobile commercial. This should be great. You used to call me on my cell phone. Good, good, pull out, good. Perfect. Here are the changes. I love changes. When you say call me on my cell phone, just add device eligible for upgrade after 24 months. Genius. Why should we be offended about that one? The sweater, Greg. The turtleneck sweater is offensive, definitely. You're a sweater guy, you're a sweater connoisseur. You should know that that's a very offensive sweater. Maybe he's got something on his neck. I, he, he sure does. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he does. That he does. Mm -hmm. I learned nothing. Lots of things are offensive. I, I learned uh, uh, since it's Black History Month and there were no black, well, there was a half black person in one of the commercials. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, I didn't see much representation. Yeah, I know. There you go. Still ahead. <laughs> While the rest of the country was focused on who won in Iowa, President Obama visited a mosque. Was he teaching USA a lesson in tolerance or intolerance? This is where I'm supposed to say you decide. So here goes, you decide. I think I handled that rather well. President Obama, if that's his real name, Jillian, visited a mosque on Wednesday outside Baltimore to pray, I mean to preach, tolerance toward Muslim Americans. It's kind of a big deal. It was his first visit to a U.S. mosque, or at least one that we've been told about, Jillian. The president, whose middle name is Hussein, said this. And since 9-11, but more recently since the attacks in Paris and San Bernardino, you've seen too often, people conflating the horrific acts of terrorism with the beliefs of an entire faith. And of course, recently we've heard inexcusable political rhetoric against Muslim Americans that has no place in our country. Inexcusable political rhetoric. Wonder who he's talking about. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. 
Well, here's what I want to know. If the president, who is not a Muslim, <laughs> refuses to use the words radical Muslim extremist, then he's not differentiating between them and modern Muslims. And isn't that just as bad as our future president, Donald Trump, saying ban all the Muslims? Probably not, but what the heck, I say it does. <laughs> All right, uh, I know for a fact that somebody at, at this panel does a mean President Obama impression. So, uh, Joanne? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Uh, well, I want to say thank you very much, and that <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm on Fox News. <laughs> there you go. All right, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to you, Gavin. Um, was, how do you feel about that visit? I'm infuriated. I, of course you would be. Well, wouldn't it be awesome if he got up there and said, look, there is a war going on against Christians all over the Middle East. Christians are literally being crucified. And how about we take some culpability, Muslims, and own up to this genocide that's going on? Wouldn't that just blow your mind? What about you, Jillian? You have a, you have a look on your face. Gavin like... wants some cheese with that wine. <laughs> hey. I'm whining I about think... dead children? I've been, Sorry, I've been sitting me a big cry baby. synagogue for seven, seven years, sitting there every Saturday morning waiting for the president to show up. Mm -hmm. Not once. Mm -hmm. But that aside, I think it's great that he went to the mosque because in the war against terrorism, something very important that's going to have to happen is eventually we're going to have to defeat radical Islamic ideology. And we can't do that without getting the buy-in of Islamic leaders, of the leaders of Muslims, the imams who are at these mosques. And I think it's about time we made them take accountability, some leadership positions, step up and actually encourage their the 99.9% the .9 of their followers who are moderate, peaceful Muslim, try 25%. to fall in line. But he wasn't even doing that at this mosque. Well, I, it well was no, he did. Tour. No, 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 he did. I think I not in this clip, that. but part of what he said, part of what he talked about was that it's time for the imams to step forward and really start preaching about why it's important to not go the way of But wasn't it a good idea to do it at a mosque this. that has past ties to terror? Hmm. Okay, the, the fact that this mosque has past ties to terror is something that's still up for grabs. It's not a... I'm grabbing. That's not a... <laughs> it's not a tried and true uh, idea. Okay. Maybe it's irreparable. Maybe it, they're unassimilable. Mm. I don't know. You know, uh, I think the whole, the whole problem here, I think, is that uh, people who are too devout... <laughs> Yeah, but that's you don't problem. have fundamentalist Christians blowing up anything. Yeah, that's true. But, but I mean, but they and do. when they do, they get chastised by the rest of all the Christians. These moderate Muslims just seem to be shrugging every time there's an explosion. Well, let me uh, bring Kat into this. Kat, uh, Jeb Bush said it was a good idea. Yeah, well, Jeb Bush says a lot of things. He really, <laughs> really does. He's trying everything to try to be. He's, he's adorable. The Bushes are all adorable. So we just kind of say, hey, that's cute. What about you? Move on. What about you? What do Look, you think? I think that it doesn't matter. I think that's something we need to talk about openly and honestly. But the problem with someone like Trump is that he just also thinks it's cool to be kind of like mean, right? With Obama, even if what he's doing and saying is stupid, people just assume, oh, but he means it like a loving way. And for whatever reason, people are super into love. There are some things that we don't know that's going on, right? There are Muslims cooperating with, you know, in the, in the war on terror, but they can't talk about it because they're cooperating. Right? Yeah. Well, we treat those guys really badly, too. The guy who helped us find Osama is, is still in jail, jail yes. right now. That's getting true. Getting the crap pounded out of him. Yeah. But look, one in four, the, the young Muslims tend to say, one in four tend to say that suicide bombing is sometimes or often justified. 25% is an insanely high number. That's not 0.1%. I, I, that blows my mind. I yeah. really struggle to believe that that's a legitimate poll that was taken more anywhere than your mind. in the universe. Send out all your limbs flying. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you kids. <laughs> they blow up so fast. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they blow up so fast. My God. All right, don't move. We got stuff. More stuff. In fact, we got to look at a brand new show featuring the ridiculously handsome Lou Dobbs and some average looking ladies. Finally tonight, a look at a brand new show coming this fall. You see, I love the show Shark Tank because it epitomizes everything that's great about the American free market spirit. But I thought, wouldn't it be great to combine that idea with this awesome election season? So I asked Joanne and Catherine to shoot a pilot for a new show. I'm calling Political Shark Tank. Take a look. Coming up this season on Political Shark Tank. 
Presidential candidates are out to receive the endorsement of three high-profile sharks. I'm all in on this guy. He is very persuasive. Who are the sharks? Catherine Tiff was a top CEO of a Fortune 500 company in a past life before being born into white privilege. Do you hate me? With a background in grape fermentation, Joanne Nosichinsky is the most inebriated woman in cable news. I'm great at crossing my arms. And he's the once notorious party boy and adventure seeker turned multi-billionaire heartthrob, Lou Dobbs. I haven't always been this good looking. Just kidding, I have. Each candidate's future will be determined by this panel of voters. Listen, I like you. If you like me, vote for me. Well, it's not that simple. Why are you running? I'm running because we have to take our country back. Oh, I didn't know it was stolen. <laughs> but not every shark is willing to bite. Convince me why I should go all in. Our volunteer army is incredible. Let's cut the crap, Ted. <laughs> That's not funny. You, you know you've been lucky so far, right? Yep. And sometimes it might even get a little weird. You understand such an ambitious idea would take a lot of resources. I disagree. Putting a Dairy Queen on the moon? Just getting the supplies up there for the milkshakes would cost billions. It's true. A lot of milkshakes. And for that reason, I'm out. When it's all said and done, you might even see an all-out shark attack. This is insane. He's perfect. You're out of your mind. We've got a deal. Tune in to see which candidates will stay afloat and which candidates get eaten alive in the political shark tank. Another great acting job by Lou Dobbs, of course. He was. Yeah, All right, good strong. job, fellas, girls, whatever. Julian Turner, thank you for being here. Gavin McInnes, Kyle Grooms, great first-timer. Joanne and Catherine, once again, I'm Greg Gutfeld, and I love you, America.